Oh, hey. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome to Completely Irrelevant. You have to come over here. How's it going? Today we're back checking up on those blueberries that we cloned back in August. It's uh, been... Eight months since we cloned them. Let's uh, just take a little progress report here and see how they're doing. Okay, so I think I cloned 25 in August. These are my seven survivors, and uh, seven out of 25, 25 percent, no, less than that. I was like 23, 22 percent, so that's not a great success rate. But I do have this one. I hope that comes back. I'm going to consider that successful, even though it's not a great success like I would have hoped. But seven blueberry plants for free. So we did that and I thought I'm pretty sure I can get better than a 20% success rate. So I tried again. A month and a half ago I bought a big blueberry plant just to clone it. Also check to make sure that your plants aren't trademarked because if you're cloning trademarked plants that's illegal. Illegal. Anyways I was testing the limits of cloning. One of the things that I was testing is if you could clone something that has um, more than just one stem because you always see people clone one stem things and I tried cloning things with more than one stem or more than one branch already to see if you could kind of jumpstart the process and already have like a really small bush but not just a stick. Anyways, and then I tried cloning things that already had fruit buds on them to see if that was possible and what I learned is that the tried and true methods are probably the best. You want to stick with the stick, you know, you want this year old wood that's it's just a stick and you want to strip all the leaves off and everything. So these ones, you can see like this one had some fruit buds on it and it's dying back because it doesn't, it doesn't have the roots to support it. And that was kind of my hypothesis, but I wanted to see if I could just get a jump start. So this tub, you know, of my, we'll call that 30 something. Um, these two will probably, these three will probably still live. We get two for, so we got like 12 out of 40. You know, that's not bad. Um, but I kept going and, um, and then when I cloned them, I put them in these tubs. So if you look inside this tub, you can see that the results uh, with this batch of cloning was much more successful. I think some of these don't look that great, but I probably will have, you know, let's call it a 90% success rate in here. And these are, I mean, these are a month and a half old. Look at the, look at the growth. I mean, some of these have two, three inches of growth on it. So what I've found in addition to the first video is ways to make improvements. The next thing that I'm going to do is to add perlite to the soil to make it more fluffy and airy because they don't have any roots yet and when they do grow roots they're the really fine small tiny hairs hairs and hairs and and they like really airy fluffy soil so I think adding a bit of perlite you know I could probably get some for free but even if I did buy it it's cheap the other thing that I found is these totes I don't know how much they are, like, how much do you think these totes are? Six or seven bucks? These totes make perfect greenhouses. I left this tub outside all winter long. Well, that's a big bee. So, what I'm finding is that um, with this second batch, I was experimenting. I'm trying to find out if there's a way, um, what works better, what's not going to work. Um, what's the best thing to do and what I'm finding is that the thinner cuttings don't do as well it's best to find something like I'm finding that 
a little bit smaller than the diameter of the pencil is what's working the best and what I'm having the best results with. Anything that's starting to develop fruit and flower on it, when they're small like this, you're going to want to take that off. Otherwise, some of these ones over here had started developing flowers, and I was like, that's cool. And then, because they don't have the root structure yet, they can't support it. So here was, um, you know, this has just been outside. Keep it in the shade somewhere. You know, cool, but also it keeps the humidity in there. It keeps them from drying out. Um, great success there. We'll call that, that one 90%. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you guys was this uh, other experiment that I have. They're from the same plants. Uh, the only difference is that this one was inside a window, like the very beginning of spring. So is this inside in the window, in this container? Um, I don't know how much it cost because my wife bought it, but I think it was like seven or eight bucks. So it works really good. But those containers, they work just about as good. And you can fit like twice as many plants in them. So, so these ones are doing pretty good. They have some uh, orange stuff on them. That's cinnamon that I was trying to keep the fruit flies out of here with. But pretty good success rate in here too. Um, for instance, here's one of the forked ones that I was trying to, you know, get a jump start. And you can see that it's dying back just because it can't support it with... You know, if it has roots, they're really tiny, and um, they just can't do it. But if you notice, all these, you know, pencil size ones have done really well. I even, like here, I tried, I used one that my, um, my cutting was going to be too short, so I took one that had a, a fork and cut part of it off. That worked just as good, so they don't have to be perfectly straight. Um, but... What do we got here? We got 11 in there. Um, it's really simple. If you're going to start a blueberry farm, this is what you need to do. So I have 35 or 36 of these cloned ones, and I have about 20 more mature ones that are at least a year. I have enough varieties of blueberry that I don't think that I need to buy any more plants. I mean, there, if I see something really cool, uh, or uncommon, I might buy that, but I'm super excited. You can see it on my face. I love blueberries. I love blueberry plants. And I love that you can take a stick and grow a plant out of it. Is that, does that blow your mind? It's just science. It's just science. So check back this fall. I think I'm probably going to do 60 more. Maybe more than 60. I don't know. It's going to depend on how much my plants grow this year, but... Um, this is an awesome way. All these blueberry plants, all of them, all these cuttings, I'm going to count them as basically free. Like I probably have $20 for all of them, and I can use this stuff over and over and over again. Look at this plant. These berries will be ready in like a week. And if you don't love fresh blueberries out of your own backyard, you got a problem. If you like the video, don't forget to hit like, um, share, subscribe, completely irrelevant, and check back. I'm going to do more cloning videos, not just of blueberries, but other things. Completely real. Completely real. So like us on Facebook and subscribe. In the vastest of space, this is completely real. Completely real. Completely real. Keep it real. Come to completelyirrelevant.com for more family-friendly fun and adventures and other projects and cool stuff. You remember that plum tree that I potted? Grew from seed over there? Here it is. I am going to turn this tree into a fruit cocktail tree. So tune in for that video, the fruit cocktail tree. You guys can watch me start from having 20 plants to having a you pick blueberry farm. And that's pretty sweet.